Hi everyone, I'm Greg from the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my top five basic things I do to keep my machines running at peak performance. Welcome back. Performing some quick and basic maintenance on our laser machines is a great way to make sure that they're always ready for use. Let's get started with number five, and that is wipe it down. I like to use a damp, warm cloth just to wipe down the frame of the machine. This is a really good indicator that when the frame starts to get dirty, other parts of the machine are also getting dirty too. I find that if a warm, damp cloth isn't getting the job done, I'll take a couple spritzes of LA's Totally Awesome. I never spritz directly on the machine because as we know, the D1 series machines and many other machines on the market have an exposed controller board and harsh cleaners or even soft cleaners like LA's Totally Awesome can cause corrosion on that board. If I find that LA's Totally Awesome still isn't cutting through any of the dirt or grime that's on this machine, I'll step it up one more notch and use the shop's favorite, and that is denatured alcohol. Number four, smooth running. I always like to make sure that my laser module can run smoothly around within the work area. For this, I'm gonna turn back to you again, the shop favorite of denatured alcohol and some paper towels. Here on the side rail, there's a guide rail on the bottom and there's one underneath on the top here. The other side gets the same treatment here. And again, on the top, when we take a look at the laser module, it too has a rail on the top and then there's one located up underneath. Cleaning the side rails is as easy as taking this paper towel with the denatured alcohol on it and just running it along all of the rails on the machine, getting the lower and the upper. We'll even move the machine frame a little bit here to make sure that we get behind it. While I'm wiping the frame down, I'm making sure that I feel for any bumps or any uh, foreign material that is on this rail that would cause this frame rail to hang up. Once all the frame rails are cleaned up, we'll move on to the guide wheels. Again, we'll take another paper towel with that same denatured alcohol on it, and we're going to wipe down these wheels. Each carriage here has three of them. On the laser module, there's two on the top and then one underneath. The side rails are the opposite with one wheel tucked behind up there and then two on the bottom here. This too is another area to check for any little bumps or any foreign material on these wheels that would cause this laser module to hiccup while it's running. Once all those rails and guide wheels are nice and sparkly clean, it's time to apply some grease. And for that, I turn to the grease that comes with the machine. This is Pen Cheng. And there's a lot of questions that I see on social media about this. And this is the silicone grease for both the rails and the wheels. This is the one lubricant that I recommend on these machines. So don't use oil, don't use WD-40. Just take a little bit of this grease here, put maybe about half a pea's worth on the tip of your finger just a little bit of that grease on a finger is enough to coat this entire bottom rail, front and rear, and also the top. As a part of number four of my list of cleaning and re-greasing the guide rails on the machine, I like to also check the belt since I'm working around these rails. I'll check the tension to make sure that they are the same on both the left and the right hand side. I also check the belts to make sure that there's no fraying or cracking on them. I'll do those on the side rails and on this cross member beam. Number three, fire prevention. For this, I'm going to move the machine off to the side and I'm gonna to turn towards the honeycomb and backer plate. I find this is one of the most overlooked maintenance items on a machine, and it's also a source of where a lot of fires can start. 
especially if you're working with a lot of wood products. The honeycomb will get a lot of that smoke residue that can later on ignite very easily, especially the backer plate. We'll see on my backer plate, I've got an Amona residue on here. Let's clean this up. Denatured alcohol can be used to clean the smoke residue off the honeycomb and this backer plate. I find that denatured alcohol, it does take a bit longer. You have to use a little bit more and this is actually getting kind of expensive. I've switched over to LA's Totally Awesome. I found that it works a lot better, it works faster, and it's far less expensive. To clean, I'll just saturate the area where all of that residue is. And I can see that this running down already, it's already starting to remove that residue. You can see this is already running down and it really does clean up that quickly. Look at that, that is super easy to do. I've got a couple spots in the middle here where I'll let that uh, LA's Totally Awesome soak in a little bit more, but this is absolutely the quickest, easiest way I know to clean up all that nasty residue that gets transferred onto our backer plate. Number two, can you see me now? For this next item, we're going to inspect and clean the lens on the laser module. I'm going to completely remove mine from the machine just so that it's easier to demonstrate what I'll be showing you. The easiest way to access the lens on this D1 Pro laser module is to remove the orange guard on the front here. And the first thing I'll do is I will remove the airline that is on the side here. And that should only ever be finger tight because these are some pretty delicate threads on here. And on the back side of this guard, there are two screws that fasten this entire guard in place. And I'll just remove those. With the screws removed, this just drops easily out, revealing the full air assist nozzle kit on here. And I'll grab an Allen wrench and remove that. And that will reveal the lens assembly on the end here. And this end here does unscrew. Now that we have all the parts out, inspection is going to be very easy. I'll first take a look at the focusing lens that's on the laser module. This stays in place. And what I'm going to look for is any etching or marking. And this is typically going to be a rectangular in size. And if I have anything with that, I'll need to contact Xtool about replacing this assembly here. Typically, we don't have that issue. It's more of this lens right here. This will have an etched square mark on it. Sometimes this will be cracked or if we're not running the air assist nozzle, which I always recommend that you do, this lens can become uh, covered with smoke residue. And then very quickly after that, it usually has an etched mark on it. But if we keep up on our maintenance on here, we can keep this crystal clear and running like new. If there is any residue on this lens, I like to use isopropyl alcohol and I put some of that isopropyl alcohol on one of these foam cleaners and I'll clean primarily the outside here. Every once in a while, somehow there's some smoke residue that gets to the backside of this lens. Not sure how that happens, but I have seen it. If I'm finding that I'm still having troubles cleaning any residue or marks off of this lens, I may need to take some of that same isopropyl alcohol and put it in a small container with a cover and place this inside and let it soak overnight. I have seen that make it a lot easier to clean any of that residue that's off of here. This really does need to be absolutely crystal clear for best performance. My lens is absolutely clean. In fact, when I hold it up to the light to inspect it, it doesn't even look like there's any glass in there. 
We're now down to number one on my list, and that is still showing some love to this laser module, and that is to make sure that the intake cooling fan remains clean on the laser module. To gain access to the cooling fan on the top here, we will need to remove this connector. That's why I like to do the lens cleaning first. That way, if I have this connector removed, I can go easily to this step here. We would remove all four of these screws and carefully lift the cover off. My preference is to leave the fan in the housing and go back with a light damp denatured alcohol on this uh, foam Q-tip here and carefully clean each of the blades. The fan that's underneath this cover has a very short lead on it, and I see a lot of people that pull that fan out and they start moving it around, and at some point they break one of the leads that goes directly up to the motor, and it's not serviceable, it's not able to be reconnected to the fan, and a whole new fan assembly must be purchased. Keeping the cooling fan, the heat sinks, and the electronics inside this laser module, it's kind of a very tedious and delicate task to keep that clean. So as a part of number one on my list of keeping this clean is not even having to go in there ever to clean that. And for that, I always run an exhaust enclosure around on my machine, and I run an exhaust fan that's very efficient on here. I picked this one up because this is the first exhaust uh, inline fan that I used in the shop here, and this flows about 200 CFM. And while that sounds like it's a lot of airflow when you have a relatively small enclosure around on the machine, once we start factoring in that it only removes the air that is around the closest area for the exiting for this fan, which means that smoke and smoke residue will linger off in this corner here. And that is still a good opportunity for that smoke and smoke residue to get pulled into this cooling fan. That's why I've upgraded this exhaust fan to one that I have outside of the shop here. And that one flows about 450 to 600 cubic feet per minute. Now, when I have the exhaust enclosure on here, that kind of airflow is a little bit too much for this. But I tell you what, I'm working on a project, what I'm engraving, or especially when I'm cutting through wood products, all of that smoke and that nasty smoke residue is immediately evacuated out of the area. It doesn't have time to stick to any of the rails on the machine. It doesn't have time to clog up around this uh, orange shield that's on the laser module. And definitely it doesn't have time to get pulled down into the laser module. Keeping your laser machine cleaned and properly lubricated is the best way to make sure it's gonna be there for you for your next project. I hope that you're able to use some of these things on my list and they help to keep your machine running in optimum performance. If you like this video, show it some love by giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. Doing any number of these things really helps the channel out but more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you.